Hello. Um, yeah. I apologise for my voice because I've got a cold, so please do feel sorry for me. <laughs> um, so yeah, straight to the point, I'm looking at specimen completeness in order to quantify the quality of the tetrapod fossil record. And I'm using these two techniques, the skeletal completeness metric and the character completeness metric. And these were created by Philip Mannion and, and um, Paul Upchurch in 2010. And they basically um, uh, calculate how much of a skeleton is preserved into relation, in relation to what we know is to have existed for that skeleton. Um, as you, I'm sure you can see already that these percentages, this is the average completeness score for all of these groups, for all of the fossil groups that um, the, these completeness um, metrics have been applied to. Probably you can already tell that there's consistent differences between the two, so again, like 30s in the skeletal and 40s in the round of the 70s for anomadons. And, um, and, and this is because of the different approaches that these, um, these metrics take to quantify the, the, the touch by fossil record. Um, at the moment, I'm looking at skeletal completeness, um, I'm collecting skeletal completeness data for non avian and therapod dinosaurs. And as, as an example, at the top is a, a complete skeletal diagram with Barry Ike's walker in. And at the bottom is the actual preserved remains of a solid type specimen. Now, if I want to calculate how much of the specimen is actually preserved, I need to assign percentages to each of the different bones within, um, within the complete skeleton. And to do that, I did very, very simple 2D shape modelling of, of skeletal diagrams like the one on the top, made by Scott Harmon. And um, so yeah, and then I assigned percentages to each individual bone or each section of the body based on how, based on the area value of each of the shapes that I assigned to a different bone or section. So I've got these percentages for each, each different section. And then you get out of the whole body, whole remote range of the, of the highest height, which comes to about 28%, which is fairly average for the non avian therapods that I've calculated so far. Um, so yeah, carriage completes on the other is slightly different where it assigns percentages to different parts of the body based on how many phylogenetic characters are within each section of the section of the, the skeleton. And so that get, gives you slightly different results and that's why percentages in the last slide are slightly different to each other. Um, so yeah, but I don't want to just look at non avian theropods, I want to collect the sort of data for many groups of tetrapods like marine tetrapods, flying, terrestrial, anything I can get my hands on basically. And the point of this is to basically address a couple of key questions in relation to our interpretation, our penetological interpretation. Um, uh, the fossil record is generally considered to be strongly influenced by a number of biases, and the, and the, the, the quality or the, the completeness of the specimens is likely to be one of those biases. You can imagine that a number of specimens that we're getting controls our ability, or the preservation of those specimens controls our ability to actually identify, to identify these specimens to low taxonomic levels, which then influences our interpretation on diversity and on mass extinctions. And so we can, like, are we actually seeing high diversity in a certain time period or for a certain group? Or are we actually, is it just because the, com the, the completeness of their record at that time for that group is particularly high? Or is there an extinction or not? Because there's a low, low, um, a low completeness value for that final record. Um, what we're going to try and consider as well is um, what actually controls preservation. So actually, maybe is it, um, is it the animal's the body size or their ecology or the environmental deposition that they are that, they're, that they've been deposited in? And, um, and actually, what's interesting is trying to ascertain what level of human bias there is that's affecting these completeness scores that we gain. Um, are there, like, are, are we just, are there particularly high completeness scores for certain groups because we're just more interested in them and we've collected more, more data on them? Or are there actually particular characters or particular, yeah, particular characters of specimens that are just more easily diagnosable than the fossil record? So it's less regardless on high quality preservation. So, yeah, so these are some of the key questions that I want to answer and hopefully I will do within the future. So, um, yeah, thank you.